Hello, my insane friends. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad that I could be with you here today. And I wanted to share with you a six step strategy that I use for fixing lots of things. And it's not just fixing physical things. It's it, it, the same strategy helps out with just about anything in life. And I discovered this strategy or the way to explain this strategy because I'm looking at a comment on my other YouTube channel. The person commenting was good enough to tell me about his achievement at fixing this car. What he had done was he, he spelled out and told the entire story from start to finish of exactly what he did to fix this car after watching my video and learning what he could from the video. And his problem wasn't exactly the same as the problem that I was showing in the video, but I recognized in his story that he's utilizing the same kind of strategy that I do when I go to tackle a problem that I haven't tackled before. So while I was responding to him and congratulating him and pointing out, you know, step by step the things he did right, because I just wanted to give him some encouragement, you know, and I wanted to encourage specifically the things that he did right so that if he didn't notice exactly what his path to success was, he could notice and he could repeat it again and again and have more successes. As I was writing this, I realized that I could share this with more than just him and also be putting it in a video so that I could look at it myself and remind myself when I'm having trouble, hey, are you following the correct strategy? Are you doing this right? Because here, number one, examine the problem. It, it doesn't have to be working on cars. It doesn't have to be fixing a watch. It doesn't have to be your home gym system. It, it could be, you know, trading stocks. It could be strategizing how you're going to add value to the home that you just bought for real estate investing. You know, get a very clear, specific idea of what the problem is as specific and concise as you possibly can. Boil that thing down to the bare bones. What exactly is the problem? Then number two, so you want to seek out knowledge and study for the worst case scenario. Now that may sound a little negative, you know, but you don't want to be naive when you're going after a problem. You want to be prepared for the worst case scenario. You want to budget for the worst case scenario, uh, not just budget in money, but budget in time and the amount of energy and effort it's going to take to tackle this problem. I guess I should have made this two steps, but they're seeking out the knowledge. But they, 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 they're so intertwined. you got to seek out the knowledge for tackling the worst case of this problem. And the worst case that you think it might be. And I know at this point, you don't really know a lot about it. Because step three is you're going to be gathering the tools and stuff that you think are necessary. And then number four is where you really learn a lot more. And that is you take action. You really jump in there and you take action and you try to solve the worst case scenario that you thought would be what was necessary to fix the problem with as prepared as you possibly can for fixing the problem with the little knowledge that you had from studying and learning about the problem, but you haven't actually tackled it yet. Now you're tackling the problem. Now you're in there. You're in the thick of it. You're in the trenches, so to speak, and you're going to learn a lot more than you ever did from your research on the problem. That doesn't mean you should skip research or gathering the knowledge before you jump in there. Because one of the reasons why you're learning so much while you're actually doing is because you got a head start on learning about the problem by going out seeking knowledge, watching those videos, reading a book, whatever. And now you know barely enough to be able to understand what you're going to learn while you're trying to do it. If you know what I mean, you've got to have some kind of foundation of knowledge before you jump in there to build on your knowledge while you're in there and you're really learning things very fast. A lot of things very fast because you're really in there trying to do something. And if you haven't tried to learn anything before you start that, you've got no foundation. And so some of the things that you're trying, you're learning while you're trying to do may not make any sense and, and you really won't learn them well. Or you just make that many more mistakes. And once you're in there, the mistakes are costing you time and money. You need to do both. And this brings us to another point. You may want to, once you've jumped in there and you've taken action, you may want to go back to step two, seek the knowledge uh, repeatedly. You may want to go back and forth between step four, jumping in there, and step two, seeking the knowledge. You know, that's why sometimes you'll see do-it-yourselfers and even professional mechanics like I have been for 30 years with all kinds of certifications sitting there with a manual while 
doing the work and then referring to the manual. There's no drawback to doing that. It, and it really helps. Step five is re-examine the plan and adapt to the situation. Well, I guess I kind of skipped forward to that, didn't I? Because you're re-examining, if you're going back and forth between step four and step two, then you are, you're, you're in there, you're in the thick of it and you're running into problems and you're making mistakes and then you're re-examining the plan and you're changing the plan, you're adapting to the situation. And part of that adaptation is going back to any kind of information that you can possibly find on the situation, whether it be YouTube videos or, or manuals or books or a mentor that you can call or news articles about the stock that you're trying to deal with or the ETF. But that's not financial advice. And I would like to apologize right now for the lack of content that I put up here recently. It's because of the market conditions right now. There's so much negative going on the market conditions right now. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it. Number six. And this could be one of the most important things. And this guy did it too. This, this guy did it and it triggered the memory and the, 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 the realization that this is the kind of strategy that I've been doing. And, and I cap when I make a YouTube video about something that I've done that worked out well. And it's usually step number six is me making the video. And step number six for him was commenting on one of my videos and letting me know exactly what he did step by step and what he accomplished. And step number six is, you know, share and celebrate your accomplishments. And that's exactly what he did. He shared and celebrated his accomplishment. Now, you need to do that, not just, it doesn't just benefit the people that you share it to, uh, which it does, it really does. It benefits everybody that you share your accomplishment with. It benefits because then they can learn from what you did and how you got there and how you accomplished that. And maybe they can copy that and accomplish the same thing or something different with the same method. And so that benefits everyone that you share with. But the other thing too is that that it makes you feel good to share. And I'm not talking about, you know, arrogant bragging and stuff. I'm, I'm just, I'm talking about, uh, you know, hey, I did this. That's not what he did. He, he wrote down, you know, he started it at point A, and did this, did this, did this, you know, all six steps, well, all five steps, and, you know, he didn't mention that he's, but he did do the, the uh, celebrating by posting the comment, but he went through all six steps of how he did it, which is enough information for somebody to learn from his comment, the path to success. That's not arrogant bragging. That's the difference between arrogant bragging and celebrating an accomplishment in a way that will benefit other people. So bear that in mind too. You might want to think about that when you go to celebrate your accomplishments. How am I going to celebrate this accomplishment? And, and the way that I'm going to celebrate this accomplishment, is it going to be beneficial to other people? And if you do it in that way where it is beneficial to other people, the, the celebration of your accomplishment, then uh, you're benefiting those other people. And they're, there's no greater way to do it that I can think of because, I mean, if you could just figure out a way to do everything you do in a way that benefits others as much as it does you, how much how much better could the world be if enough people were doing that? And I think I want to leave you with that. And I want to stop right there so I can meditate on that too. Thank you so much for being here. And I would like to wish you an insane amount of success. Thank you.